Age of Empires 4 has just come out, and with it we get 8 full featured factions to dive in on, each one with their own unique mechanics, soundtrack, aesthetics, and even the English getting a passive bonus to Terrible Cuisine. But in this video today, we'll be covering the fifth in our series by talking about the Abbasid Dynasty, a faction with strong camel units that counter all types of cavalry, allowing you to punch hard into top tier factions such as the French or Rus. Now I've covered this in my ranking guide to help give you an overview of each faction, which you can find linked in the upper right corner. The way this video is structured, we'll be going over a general overview of the faction, discuss the unique units, go into the technology specific to the civilization, talk about each landmark through the ages, quickly go over the navy, and then close the video out talking about army compositions, what units thrive, and some basic build order. order. And you can quickly navigate to each topic mentioned by using the chapters linked in both the timeline and the description. And if you'd like to see the other guides, they'll be linked at the end of the video to my playlist that will have each guide as I create it, and you can also find that in the pinned comment below. If this is your first time on my channel, the way I like to do things is upfront the knowledge within so you can decide to stick around to hear me out on what my explanations are. So with that being said, the Abbasids play pretty slow in the earlier portions of the game. With access to their first unique unit, the Camel Archer in the Second Age, they are a stronger early game raider style of unit more than anything else. Their biggest boon though is the aura that the Camel Archers and Camel Riders give off. It smells really bad, but also all nearby enemy cav does 20% less damage. In addition, their riders get a disgusting plus 18 or plus 20 to cav depending on which age they are in. So if fielded with proper support, an Abbasid camel rider rush can completely smash out the French royal knights. But the Abbasids also get a super strong faction technology. All of their infantry units start the game with the siege, engine, siege engineering technology, enabling them to make battering rams and siege towers from the beginning. Now this is going to enable you to get early rams out to do some very strong damage to your opponent if they don't counter you quickly. Outside of that, the Abbasids have two big faction mechanics. The first, Golden Age, enables you to increase your econ gathering, research rate, and other goodies based off of the total number of buildings you have. And the second is their House of Wisdom. This acts as the landmark you build to progress the ages for the Abbasids. And rather than making a new building, you build specific wings to specialize in a certain focus for your civilization, military, culture, economy, and trade. Each wing grants you special technologies that unlock through the ages. It's a truly unique faction that requires a mastery of laying out your buildings, uh, planning your expansions, and really properly supporting your lower durability unique units to maximize their punching power. But that's all you wanted to know. Feel free to head on out. But before you do, don't forget to comment, like, and or subscribe to the channel. Each one of those things helps out in varying degrees, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. But let's get started here on our Abbasid Dynasty Civilization Guide. To start us off for the Abbasids, let's go over a general overview. Even though we already kind of did that, let's go into some better detail here. So the Abbasids, of course, are a faction that relies on their camels. Their camel archers and camel riders can be very devastating um, if you field them properly. The big thing, of course, is that those camel riders are gonna give you a massive amount of damage versus cavalry, other cavalry that you're fighting against, and it allows cavalry to do less damage, right? The same thing can be said too of their camel archers, which you get access to in the second age. This is very nice. Now, what is really interesting about the Abbasids is, if you field camel archers and camel riders and horsemen and knights, you will have effectively covered every single thing that needs to be countered but it just requires an intensive amount of micro on your part. The camel archers get a bonus versus light infantry. So that's your spearmen taken care of, which are going to be countering all of your other, well, cav units. Your camel riders get a bonus versus cavalry, which is very awesome, right? And then your horsemen get a bonus versus range units. And then of course, lancers, or the, that's the knight version for the Abbasids, can do a heavy amount of damage into uh, men at arms and the such. So you pretty much could have an entirely mobile cav force in the um, Abbasids, which is different. It's different than you could say with the French, right? You still need to cover other things with the French. Okay, you, they, they have a bunch of um, light infantry. Well, they don't have any kind of cavalry with the French that are gonna counter that light infantry. So that's the kind of cool thing about the Abbasids. But it, like I said before, it does require you to really manage that a lot better. Now, in addition to the 
uh, Abbasids get this building called the House of Wisdom. And this is how you will progress through the ages. You make one of four buildings, a culture, economic, military, or trade wing that attaches to this building. And this building will then have three researches per wing that you are granted access to in each subsequent age. So for example, the culture wing has got one technology that unlocks in the second age, then another in the third, and then a last in the fourth. What's cool about this is you can kind of fine tune how you want to play this specific faction. You know, do you really want to focus heavy and strong on military in the beginning? Well, you're going to make a military wing first and then you're going to go down that route. I will give you a hint. Military wing is not the first one to make and we'll go over that later. But it's just kind of a nice way that you can kind of kit out how you want to play if you want to be heavier on econ or culture, trade, what have you. So that is a really cool ability. Now, in addition to the actual building itself creating its wings, it also has the Golden Age. Now, the Golden Age is this really awesome ability that will basically give an increase to resource gather rate, research time, and production speed. And it is based off of the total amount of houses, or I'm sorry, not houses, buildings within the aura around or within the Golden Age. And I'll show that off in a little bit here. But both the Delhi Sultanate and the Abbasids also benefit extremely well from berry bushes, allowing you to generate from them 25% faster. So that is um, another little cool boon to their economy. And lastly here, the biggest and strongest ability, uh, maybe strongest is, 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 a, is too much of a word here, is the ability for the Abbasids to start off with siege engineering, enabling all their spearmen and men at arms to create um, rams and siege towers right out the gate. That enables you to get a lot of really early aggression in the game, if you so wish, by building some rams and going after your opponent. But outside of that, as far as the kind of <coughs> weaknesses and downsides of the Abbasids go, you're going to be focusing a lot on trying to maintain that golden age. So you're going to be building towers in a lot of places. And if you're not doing any kind of early, early rushing, the towers are a good thing. But you then have to kind of get your mind around that way of playing of, being somewhat defensive, but trying to keep a kind of aggressive thing in your back pocket so that you can say, hey, this is what I'm trying to build towards and what I'm trying to work towards. So planning is super important with the Abbasids, your expansions, how you're actually going to lay your city out, what level of aggression you're going to be in what age, so on and so forth. So those are kind of the big brain things you do have to think about when you're playing the Abbasids. But once you get that down, I find that you will be able to really take off with the Abbasids since they have such a high skill ceiling. And they're a pretty big barrier to entry, but like I said, once you master them, they will be pretty destructive. Moving into the units, we've got a lot to talk about, so let's kind of crack this egg open. So talking about the infantry first, we get men-at-arms, nothing special about them, just pretty much standard infantry. Like I've said before, though, with all infantry, they can immediately make siege equipment, so they can make battering rams, springalds, siege towers, mangonels. This is extremely beneficial, especially these latter... Um, to right here with the uh, Springald and the Manganel, depending upon your um, age, because this gives you access to just making some quick field siege equipment, which is very nice. Now, looking at the Spearmen, everything here is pretty normal, but, and when we cover this in the uh, unique tech, they get an uh, increase to their attack range. So right now their attack range is 0.29. You can double that by... Uh, well, you can increase it by 100%, effectively doubling it, to make it so that your little pike formation like this, your little um, phalanx, it allows an additional row to basically do damage. Because if something were to charge into this, the front two are going to be able to engage, while the third one's kind of there to fill in. Um, and depending on where the, where the unit kind of splashes around them, they'll do damage to them. But with that upgrade, that third row will in fact engage against cavalry. So it allows you to do even more damage and use this really strong um, standard ground formation, which I very much like. Now moving into the range portion of the army, Handgunners, standard fare. Crossbowmen, standard fare. But when we get to these guys, the archers, the Abbasids have the ability to increase the, the attack speed of all both archers and camel archers, which we'll talk about in a little bit. This will make them very effective when it comes to um, those kind of mid-range, right? That later second age and early... Um, 
Oh, yeah, later second age, early third age. You get a lot of use out of these elite archers um, as they get better and better with that upgrade to that attack speed. They'll be able to pour out more damage quicker. And of course, they're going to be outranged by, say, longbowmen, but you can still do a lot of damage, especially if you're uh, moving and scooting and shooting at the same time. You'll just get so much shoot and scoot. You get so much damage out of them. And of course, remember, these are all infantry units, so you can build your siege weapons. Now, Moving into the actual unique units here, we get the Elite Camel Rider, which is the Camel Rider. All this is upgraded all the way to the fourth age because it looks cool as hell. But you get its aura, the Camel Unease. Camels cause horse cavalry units to deal 20% less damage, which is massive. And these guys themselves do 20 more damage against Cav. So that's a 30 total damage coming out of these guys, which is very juicy. You can upgrade them with shields, giving them three more armor in addition to the armor you can give them from the blacksmith. They're very strong units. And you can give them support abilities to increase the armor of all of your infantry units by one around them. You can increase their speed. You can increase their natural armor too by barding. There's so many ways to make your camels even stronger in the game. And if you push these guys in conjunction with their second age counterpart in, the archer... You get even more punching power because these guys are going to do damage versus light melee infantry. Now, it is worth noting when it comes to the horse, quote unquote, archer between the, the Mangadai, Mangadai, the camel archer, and the horse archer of the Rus, this unit does the most damage DPS wise. Of course, the horse archer of, of the Rus um, gets benefits from health benefits from the Rus uh, unique technologies. And the Magidai can shoot while moving, but these guys, pound for pound, do the most damage, which is very significant. And you can increase their attack speed, all sorts of buffs from the uh, House of Wisdom as well as from the Blacksmith. And now, if you take these two units and then match them with Elite Horsemen, you get the benefit of getting a bonus versus range. That's awesome, right? Bonus versus ranged. Bonus versus light infantry, which is your spearmen. And then bonus versus cav. That, that is amazing. Then you can use these guys, your elite lancers, to break apart men at arms. So like I've said before in the overview, you could solely focus on cav and have a really strong force for the Abbasids. And lastly, you get the culvern. We talked about this in the HRE video, but the only other faction that gets access to the culvern is the HRE and also the French through their royal... Um, Royal Artillery Institute or whatever it's called. Their special landmark they get on the fourth age. But that those are the unique units here. Let's go now into the technology. With technology, we got a lot of unique things going on. So for one, almost no building in the Abbasids builds technology other than the House of Wisdom. Like no unique technology, I mean. I mean, you get your standard stuff from say a blacksmith and your upgrades at barracks and whatnot. But all the unique technology is housed in the House of Wisdom. This is, of course, what forwards your uh, civilization throughout the ages by building respective wings. So let's go through these first four first. You get the Phalanx, which is going to increase the attack range of Spearmen by 100%. Your Camel Handling, which is increases the movement speed of Camel units by 15%. Then you get your Reduce the Reload Time of Archers by 25%. And lastly, Camel Barding, which increases that armor of Camel units by 2%. So you can see this is uh, kind of leaning towards camel units for some reason. So you'd, you'd think it's a unique unit or something. But we have over here all of the research upgrades. And the way that these are divided up is they're divided per column. So each column is a different wing. The first one here is the culture wing. This is military. This is the, um, not civic, but econ economic wing. And this is the trade wing. And then each row corresponds to an age. This is the second age, the third age, and the fourth age. So as you progress through the ages, you'll get more and more um, technologies to unlock. But quickly going through these, you get the fresh food, uh, I'm sorry, fresh food stuffs, which reduces the cost of villagers by 50%. The agriculture bonus here, which stacks with the horticulture bonus from the mill, so increasing that gathering rate by, of farms by 15%. And village drop off of 8% more resources in that final fourth age. Camel support increases the armor of nearby infantry by one. This is going to increase the uh, camel riders armor by three by giving them shields. Couple that with this barding that's plus five armor to them which is very nice. Boot camp increases the health of all infantry by 15 percent. And then moving into the um, economic wing we get preservation of knowledge reduce the cost of all technology by 30 percent. 
Medical centers keeps heal, I'm sorry, keeps heal nearby units for two health every one second. And then faith, imams can convert units without holding a relic, but only target a single unit. This one's pretty interesting, right? So you lose the Wololo conversion aura, but you get the ability to kind of snipe in the conversion sense without holding a relic. You can kind of sneak them in with some of your army. It's a pretty cool mechanic. Now, as the last one here for trade wings, we get the spice roads, which increases the gold income from traders by 30%. It grants armor of five to traders and trade ships, which is very nice if they're getting harassed by wolves or any kind of crap along the route. And then lastly, Grand Bazaar. Traders also return with a secondary resource. This resource is 25% the base gold value and is set at the market. So a nice ability here because also, if we jump over here to our um, market, we see that traders themselves are 33% less they are a third cheaper for the abbasids and this is very nice because they also get 50 percent reduction on their dock cost which is cool they also get a cool little special naval technology here increases does by 100 but they got a lot of these really cool benefits and we're going to get into berries in just a little bit and that sounds really weird to say out loud but the other really big kind of unique mechanic slash technology is the golden age so the way that this works is you have a big aura that generates around your your house of wisdom that will then get expanded for anything that you build see houses here you can see the the mosque madrasa all that stuff is expanding that golden aura here and that aura as more and more buildings are built into it it increases your village gatherer rate by 10 15 or 20 percent and then increases research rate by 15 or 20 percent in the latter two tiers and then the last tier increases production speeds by 20 percent you can see getting to that third golden age is very crucial. The first two, pretty easy to jump into. You just kind of have to keep building and building and you'll get there very fast, but you're going to have to make a lot of buildings and really plan out how your expansions work and everything like that because you can connect other locations. Let me give you an example here. So take a look at my little military district I've made. I click on one of my villagers and I click on just an outpost, which I find to be perfect to be one of like the best ability um, buildings to increase your golden age. And you can see if every building it says plus one golden age structures, and you can see here that the gates and walls, those don't give me that bonus. So you got to really kind of take a look at what all these things do here. Um, even the wonder only gives you one. So you can see pretty much everything except for uh, gates and walls are going to be giving you those bonuses. So let's just say we build an outpost here. So we can see the gold aura is around stuff that's in the golden age, quote unquote. But the stuff outside of it is my military district. So if I go ahead and click this, it immediately puts it in. It doesn't even need to have the building built. So you can kind of cheese it in a little in a, in a couple ways here. But taking a look, that brings us up to 59 of 60 total structures. Taking a look down here at my little expansion, even clicking on the House of Wisdom, you can see even down here where it, where it goes, right? So my expansion here is not connected to that House of Wisdom. So let's just build a house as another example. This will connect it and will advance here to the Third Age. You don't even need to finish completing this. I could walk away and still be in the Third Age. So this is how you would increase that value. And it is a pretty huge and important boon because it's the biggest mechanic around the overall um around how the what's what's these guys called <laughs> around how the uh, abbasids work because as you drop in that age it's gonna of course you're gonna lose that production speed so giving those things are, are really really crucial to ensuring that your victories happen with the abbasids but let me show you something really quick before we jump into landmarks with the berries we've warped back to the first age and let's go over some berry stuff but one thing that worth what's worth noting about this golden age it does also provide if i hover over this you can see five fire armor to anything within that uh, house of wisdom golden age area of influence so let's look back here at our uh, berries and every berry bush gives us you know a certain amount of food right 250 right here well the abbasids they gather berries at a speed of 25 percent increase and this is regardless of whether or not there is a mill there or a town center doesn't matter it's going to be 25 percent but if you build a mill within range of these berries you kind of like fortify them you 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 increase their yield by 100 percent so as this thing builds it's going to increase and it's going to double the berry yield of every single bush what's nice about this is of course you know you lose out on the ability to gather food from boars which is a, that like top tier food right there 
but this gives you a very nice, reliable, and safe way to get a lot of really good food from berry bushes. See, now they're all like reinforced. If I click on this, it says 500 out of 250. So berries are going to be a pretty crucial resource to your expansion for the Abbasids. So going through the landmarks here, it's a little bit different with the Abbasids. Like I've been saying, you produce these individual wings, which will then get made into this House of Wisdom. You won't be building any buildings. You can't influence the construction of these by throwing more villagers at them. It comes out at a flat rate of two minutes, regardless what age you're at. So the real question is, how do you progress through these? My first one, I definitely always recommend the economic wing. And you can take a look at what each um, wing is gonna give you. It tells you right there in the description. And then you can look at the corresponding, um, <clears throat> the corresponding technology like we've talked about. But I find that the economic wing, if we build this one first, it gives us access to cheaper villagers. This is gonna really allow your economy to really get a good ramp in the beginning because villagers will no longer cost 50 food, they're gonna cost 25 food. You just get two for one right there. That's a huge value. And if you get a second TC up at the end of your second age, beginning of your third age, you're basically going to be producing four villagers for the same cost of someone making two villagers. It's a very, very nice boon. In addition to when you get into stuff like this, agriculture and whatnot in the second age, it's very nice. Moving into that next age, into the third age, we have another choice of wing. And I would say the military wing is a good shot right here. And the reason behind that is because you're going to get access to camel handling, which is always lovely. Who doesn't like nice, smelly camel? But camel support here is going to give you some nice stability, some nice durability to your infantry. Increases the armor of all infantry nearby by one. I like that a lot. And then in the third age, you get access to your camel riders. This is going to further increase their durability as well by giving them a nice three melee armor. Appreciate that about the drag about the golden age there. <laughs> so these two are my big picks for the first two ages, but things are going to get a little different here as we progress forward. So let's take a look at the next age. All right, now it's time to progress to the fourth age, the imperial age, and we've got two wings that we can choose from. We are now down to the culture wing and to the trade wing. And this will honestly kind of come down to your individual game, how things are going. Do you want to get a really strong trade economy set up? Then go for that trade wing. Or do you want to just start jumping into research and help mitigate a lot of the damage coming out to your army from the keep healing aura passive in the culture wing? Now, my personal preference and what I always recommend is the culture wing followed by the trade wing because this is the cool thing. It costs 24 food, 2400 food, and 1200 gold to progress to the fourth age. Then in the fourth age, you can make the opposite wing that you did not create. You're not going to be barred out from making that last wing. So you'll always get advantage the advantage of all of these researches. It just kind of depends upon what way you want to get them. And right now, the community consensus for the most part is pretty much just to do the wings in order. One, two, three, four. So again, we're going to go with culture, then military, then, I'm sorry, economy, then military, then culture, then trade wing. I kept calling this one the uh, the economy, the, uh, the culture wing. This one is the economy wing. And that really helps you to just get a nice good ramp, in my opinion. And then you get access to, of course, your camel barding and your composite bows in the Imperial Age, which are always great. But that's how I would lay out how to do the wing generation of your House of Wisdom. This is also going to be dependent upon how you play your game. Are you going to be going with a heavy military and you want to get the advantage of getting the bonus to armor for your spearmen on the second age from your, your um, camel archers? Then that's the route you're going to take. All this is always going to be dependent upon how you're playing the game, but this is kind of the general um, community consensus on how to progress forward with the Abbasids. Next up, we have the Navy to discuss, and it's actually kind of a bit of a lackluster one. The big thing, I guess, with the Abbasid Navy is that it doesn't do as much damage. It's just a little bit faster. Um, it kind of is what it is. The Dow, the very first ship to get access to, <clears throat> is quite a weak ship, but it has a very nice, uh, I guess, burst, you could say, where it's got four burst attacks of eight archers that can all benefit from blacksmith upgrades. So that is always kind of nice. The next one, though, here is our Bagla, and this one is pretty interesting, right? So we took a look at, uh, say, the Hulk of the French, or later the HRE in English, right? They get theirs in the Third Age versus the French who get theirs in the Second Age. Now, the Hulk shoots a ballista. The Bagla here does as well. So it shoots a ballista, and it also shoots archers. This is pretty nice because it gives you the ability to um, <clears throat> basically keep a 360-degree threat of archery, <clears throat> but also have those ballistas to do some burst damage. It's worth noting too, 
the arch or the ballista does shoot from a broadside. So we don't have a lot of room to maneuver here, but let me see if I can do it. If I can just kind of keep facing the opposite direction. Um, there you go. Admiral Nelson called this cutting the wind, where you're just trading broadsides and you're constantly having one broadside of your ship that's, that has the, um, the ballista shooting. Shoot. The other one will reload. So this gets you a chance to kind of basically sh almost shoot rapid fire. Now, the Zebek here is your big warship. It's going to be shooting full four broadsides of cannons, which is very destructive. The unfortunate thing about the Zebek, say, compared to the Karak of the English, the French, and the Holy Roman Empire, is that it is very expensive to produce. By comparison here, it's 480 wood and 300 um, gold. I believe that the total resource cost for the other the other uh, the Carrick itself is like 360. So it's a, it's a bit cheaper of a ship. Actually, I think it's like I think it's I think it's 680 or something around that line. 660, 680. So uh, the Zebek is a more expensive ship. It does have four broadsides compared to the Carrick's three, and it doesn't have as much armor and health as say the Mongolian and Chinese ship. So it's a bit of a middle ground. It's got more guns. They shoot faster than the Mongolian and Chinese ships, but slower than the Karak. So you have to have some trade-off here. So you do have a little bit more durability than Karak. You do get four more guns, but you're slower, uh, both attack speed and movement speed, and you're a little bit more expensive. But it is still a pretty cool, big, huge-ass ship. That covers the Navy here for the Abbasids. Moving into army composition for the Abbasids, we have something that's very interesting. And I, I always say, you know, it depends upon your matchup and what you're going to be dealing with. But I feel like that's extremely important here for the Abbasids because they've got so many things in their military to deal with, you know, countering other units. You really have to have a good mind for what you're going to be dealing with from that civilization to build the units you need. Like take, for example, hey, you know, you're going to be playing against the French. Well, that means royal knights in the beginning. So you're probably going to want some spearmen and they're probably going to want to support or, or counter your spearmen with archers well that's what you're going to use these guys here for right those light those elite camel archers are going to be able to get in do some shots get out do some shots get out so on and so forth so it just depends upon the faction you're playing against are you dealing with a lot of heavy infantry well use you're going to be using a good amount of crossbowmen and some good men at arms or are they going to be having a lot of crossbowmen because maybe it's late stage french well that's where your horsemen come in. And you also get your camel riders too in that late stage too because these guys are going to do so much damage to royal knights. So just really be mindful of what you have accessible to you as far as your tools go and use those to the best of your ability to counter the factions you're against. I, I know I've really always given some sort of uh, loose army composition, but I feel with the amount of options you get for Abbasids and the amount of damage they can do to almost every tip, different type of unit, you have to be prepared to pivot and make the alteration to your army composition that fits the age and the civilization you're fighting against. So to go over a basic build order here, and I've already done this in my build order guide linked in the upper right corner, but just to kind of go over some stuff I maybe missed in that, it's worth noting that the Abbasids start with 50 extra wood, and this is because it allows you to make your House of Wisdom, which costs 50 wood. But I use this to make a mill immediately, because remember, as the Abbasids, you get 25% faster berry gathering and 100% berry yield. Each one of those berry bushes is essentially the same amount of food as a um, sheep. So you're doubling that up now to 500. So it's basically two sheep per berry bush. You kind of think of it like that. So while my uh, mill is being made, I continue to have my villagers that were working on the sheep work on the sheep until the mill is done. Then I'll move them over to the berries. I kind of did a little late in this example. Also, then I'll make a house and then I'll make my mining camp to start getting my uh, gold production online. You don't have to worry about getting 50 uh, wood back immediately, but you then want to do make a uh, lumber camp so you can start working on it because you're going to want to make a house of wisdom. But even if you make a house of wisdom right at, at, this, at the beginning of the game, it won't matter until you get to 400 food and 200 gold. So the way you want to really time this is having your house of wisdom be completed by the time you reach 400 wood and two, I'm sorry, 400 food and 200 gold. Because this enables you to not have any downtime and immediately make that house of wisdom progress into the next stage by building your uh, wing. Mine, of course, I always recommend is the economy wing. Um, I know I said culture wing before, but the very first one, whatever the first one is, okay? Um, but once you've done that, you've created your house of wisdom, you're good to go to pr 
to progress in the second age. And this is not a point to kind of rest on your laurels because remember with the Abbasids, you don't have to have any villagers contributing to the age advancement. They can continue their production. So if you get enough wood, make a barracks, maybe make two if that's the route you want to take to use spearmen to rush. But you can kind of get a leg up on the next stage by having the production of say houses and barracks already completed by the time that second age hits. And also, um, you maybe saw during this example, I would stop the production of certain things. This is what I mean. You do have to be mindful of that golden age. When you look at the house of wisdom when it's completed, it will always have a little star and a number over it. That star has another star within it that will slowly get larger. Well, not larger, but it'll slowly complete itself more to mirror the outlining star. That means you're getting closer and closer to that respective age. So keep an eye on that. But I was breaking buildings down because I'm like, oh man, this is, this. Is, I gotta make sure this connects. In the very beginning, when you're making your lumber camps and your mining camps and all that, don't worry if they don't connect because the house of wisdom has a huge aura and that typically connects everything. And if it doesn't, just make a house or two. It doesn't matter in the early portions under 10 structures because you're building the structures no matter what to get to 10. If you've got things that don't connect, just build another building to connect them and you're good to go. Um, so it's important to kind of be mindful of that. But once you progress into the second age, make one or two archery ranges to get your camel archers out and start having some fun. From there, it really just depends on what your matchup is going to be like, what kind of map in general you're on. Of course, you know, like I've said before, all these build orders are very dependent upon the map. We're not on an island map, so we won't be taking advantage of like heavy wood production or stuff like that. But go from there. That's your basic kind of build order. And hopefully it helps you out in setting up your early Abbasid game. And at that, it brings our video here to a close. So hopefully this helps you crack open Abbasids and how to get into them. There are a faction that's not rated very high right now because of a lot of the complexities of their golden age and having it get online for you. There's a lot of kind of the nuance of Abbasids and I'll be totally honest, I maybe have seen them in one or two multiplayer matches or, or maybe even hosting those matches and watching them myself. I think it's probably one of the least played factions. I've seen almost all the other ones except for the Delhi Sultanate. So I think that Abbasids are in a weird place because their camel archers are very strong and so are their archers. So you have to kind of balance which one fits the need for the army of the army you're playing against. So you have a lot of things you have to consider when you're playing the Abbasids, right? You have to think about these counters, which units are gonna be putting out. And I think that it makes it a very hard faction for a lot of newer players to get into if they're not very familiar with build orders they're not secure with those build orders how to build things around how to even just make their setups and their secondary expansions and so on and so forth there's a lot that goes into it so don't be scared of the abbasids because they can be a really cool faction with a really high skill ceiling you just have to put a lot of time into it and really kind of get your mind around the way a lot of their different things work but once you do i'm sure you're going to be able to just take off with it and have a lot of fun because like i said that high skill ceiling means that they can do a lot of really good damage but as always, guys, thank you so much for watching here today. If you have any recommendations for build orders or you have any questions, anything like that, please go by all means, leave a comment below. I like to make sure as much information is disseminated out to the community as possible. So if you have a whole different way of recommending the wing production or the early build order or what units to use, please let it be known in the comment section. Get all that info out to the peeps. But as always, guys, like I said, thank you so much for watching here today. Have a good one and take care.